I am Captain David Dale, commanding officer of the Earth Starship Longtree. Our ship has just entered the Olaria system. Our mission is to make contact with every alien culture we encounter, and the fourth planet of this system contains a colony of the Googlin Empire. They are a major power in this sector, but this is the first time we have encountered them in person. I really wish that this will go well. I've been interested in Google and technology for some time. Well, I just want to see the face on old stodgy Admiral Stilwell when I break the record for youngest captain who broke the standing record for number of worlds surveyed. He never likes me. And you, how do you feel, Lieutenant Lizago? I just want to get going. These away missions are always very risky. Well, you were the first man to volunteer when I announced that I needed a security officer. I admire your guts, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. I think our landing has been noticed. Let's go. Translators. Welcome to Alaria. My name is Gary Dick Richardson. My colony's leader has sent me here to see to your accommodations. Uh, you are here to negotiate trade agreements, correct? We're not interested in trade agreements. We're explorers. We're traveling the galaxy, contacting every sentient life form we encounter. So you have no interest in our colony or its people? No. The Google Empire has never met a new species that hasn't been interested in doing business with or taking advantage of our colonies. Well, Teeny Weenie Caesar is still waiting to see you. Please come with me. Your Honor, Gail Dick Richardson and the visitors from the Sky Shuttle. Approach! A traditional gesture of welcome. You are expected to return it. Welcome, my friends. I am Teeny Weenie Caesar, the ruler of the colony of Valeria IV. Please be seated. What trade concessions are you asking of this colony? You're not interested in trade concessions? No, we're not. I am Captain David Dale of the Earth Starship Longtree. This is our Lieutenant Lizago and Lobster Woman, our science officer. My real name's Diane. You have interesting hands. Oh, this? A few months ago, my hands were eaten by a giant carnivorous crab snake while on another planet. The inhabitants of that planet found me and grafted these claws onto my arms before returning me to my people. Hmm. We're from a faraway star system. We're exploring the galaxy, greeting every sentient species we encounter. Although we are interested in an exchange of technology, Your Honor, yours is the first Googlin planet we've come across. Ah! Your Honor, Private Benson from the front lines. Please excuse me a moment. Approach! Again? We've heard the Hobbling Valley three times now! What fool is responsible for this act of pure stupidity? I... I am not certain, Your Honor. Then find out, would you? Now shoo! Yes, Your Honor. Are, uh, are you at war, sir? This planet is home to a number of unintelligent, green-skinned brutes. They keep attacking our cities. We've been fighting them off for the past five years. I've repeatedly been told that the enemy is concentrated in the Hobbling Valley. But despite multiple offenses, my forces never actually seem to secure the valley. Hmm. Are you a soldier, sir? Kind of. I'm a Starship security officer. Do you have experience with advanced weapons? Yes, actually, we do. Why do you ask? You say you're interested in our technology, right? Yes, we are. Kind of. If I am to grant you access to our technology, I request that you first help me do something about the Hoblang Valley. Would you be willing to do this? Depends. You say that these creatures who are attacking you are non-sentient animals? That's correct. In that case, I see no reason why we can't give you a hand. I greatly appreciate that. Richardson? Take our visitors out to the Artificer, have him equip them for the front lines, then put them on a carrier and send them out. Yes, Your Honor. This way, please. Is something wrong, sir? It's just, I don't trust this Artificer guy I'm taking you to. Are you at liberty to speak about it here? Yes, yes, the Google Empire does not traffic in public surveillance, and I don't think anyone can hear us. Au contraire, my good. I can hear everything that's spoken all the way down that corridor. So what makes you not trust this artificer? I work in the colony's stock exchange. Teeny Weenie Caesar has been withdrawing absurd sums of money from the colony's treasury to support the war to fight those brutes. You think Teeny Weenie Caesar is spending too much? Far too much. He has exhausted all of our cash on hand and has forced the colony to sell all of its precious metals. 
I'm almost at the point where I will have to start buying and dismantling businesses just to meet the artificer's demands. How is the artificer spending that money? Ship captains, export tariffs, crate moving laborers? I don't know. Well, let's go meet this artificer guy. He should certainly be an interesting fellow. Yes, I am Captain David Dale of the Earth Starship Longtree. Are you the artificer? Yes, I am one of the sector's most versatile arms dealers. What kind of weapons are you interested in? Well, of that I'm not sure. Teeny Weeny Caesar wants us to see the front lines in Hoblang Valley. So whatever is usually used in that area would be perfect. Very good, please come with me. Here you are, jungle certified pulse pistols. First thing I'd recommend for anyone going into the area. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Did you hear something? You must be mistaken. Anyways, are you satisfied with your weapons? Okay. Then in that case, you should be heading towards the transport. Is our business here concluded? Over there! It's gone. I just saw something run through here. Long arms and green mottled skin. It fits the description of the primitives that we've been told to find. You said it had long arms. Was it walking upright? Yes, just like we were. Clearly very highly evolved primitives then. Let's keep going. Look! They held weapons just like the soldiers, but they didn't even use them! They looked like they didn't even want to use them! Speech? One of the definitions of sentient life is that it can speak. What's going on here? Also, they're different. Their foreheads look different than any Googlin I've ever seen. You'd have to see them to understand. I don't think they came from the Googlin Empire that has disrupted our world so much. They must come from someplace else. Well, they're right over there. We can ask them ourselves. Hi, I'm Captain David Dale. What is your name? How can you speak our language? The soldiers can't understand a word we say. Why do you? It's because of our translator equipment. They can interpret and translate any language into any other language. How can you do this? The Googlins have been here ten long years, and despite our extensive efforts, none of them have ever been able to understand our language. And then you show up and can speak it only seconds after you first heard it. Are you Googlins? Yeah. Fascinating. My name is Longarm Lauren. Since we can understand each other, I've got a host of questions for you. Okay. We were told that the natives here were not intelligent. Clearly, we don't know anything about what's really going on at this planet. Please, ask us anything you want. Why do you carry the Artificer's weapons? The Artificer gave them to us before we came here. But you're not Googlin soldiers. No, we're not. The Googlin leader, Teeny Weeny Caesar, asked us to intervene here. We were only interested in an exchange of technology. This Teeny Weeny Caesar. In the ten years the Googlins have been here, and the five years we've been fighting, I've never seen any sign of a Googlin leader. So you say that this person is responsible for the endless violence in the valley? No. Actually, he isn't. What do you mean? From what I could tell, Teeny Weeny Caesar knows next to nothing about the war here. He was completely dependent on whatever information was on that clipboard, for one thing. Okay, go on. And then we heard from Gary about how the Artificer was destroying the Olarian economy. He said he's an arms merchant. I've met many arms merchants over the years. I have not seen a single one that took a cessation of hostilities well. Every single one wants to prolong whatever conflict they are involved in. Makes sense. More war, more arms sales. More arms sales, more money. From what I've seen, I believe that the Artificer is giving Teeny Weeny Caesar deliberately misleading information to keep the money spigot flowing. When the soldiers attack, what exactly do they do? They chase all of us out of this valley. We're foragers, we live in nature. And once they're done, they always go towards the mountain to try to find us, never towards the rainforest where we actually go. That sounds like a terrible strategy. It is. And then, once the soldiers find nothing in the mountains and return to the city empty-handed, we repopulate the valley in which we live. And then a few weeks later, more soldiers come and the cycle starts all over again. Every time? Every time. Do you think the Artificer knows that you are intelligent? Unquestionably. Then I think we're going back to that city. 
Two minutes poking through the artificer's records, and I think I can find enough evidence for teeny weeny Caesar to put him away for a very long time. I thoroughly agree with you, Captain. Would you or any of your people like to come? I don't understand. The artificer has one hell of a defensive setup in his ship. Since we can understand each other and they can't, I think that trying to overwhelm them with numbers would be the best strategy. Well, in that case, I'm all for it. All right, then. Let's go. All right. Let's work our way around the cargo hold. If he's not here, we'll try the upper decks. Lazago, go left. Lobster Woman, go right. I'll take the middle. What about me? You're going to be my surprise in case things go south. Stay close and stay out of sight. I'll call you if I need you. Yes, sir. I wandered off while you were talking to the artificer earlier. I was trying to see if I could find something that would explain his actions. And somehow he detected me, and I was grabbed by one of his robots. After you left, the artificer tied me up and proceeded to do a bunch of calculations on this tablet. If only I could get my hands on that tablet. What are you doing here? Tinny Weeny Caesar sent you to the front lines. Are you disobeying her? The game is up. We know that you're prolonging the war on this planet to help line your own pockets. You don't know half of what I'm doing on this planet. But I can't afford for you to leave with Gary here. He knows too much. You're all my prisoners now. I think not. Oh, really? One false move from any of you and she spat on the bulkheads. Drop your weapons. I'm not joking here. Drop your weapons. Fine, then. No! What did you find? Enough to have that bastard strung up on the gallows. He deliberately tried to destroy the Olarian economy. He knew the natives were sentient, I suspected so for years. But I never would have suspected a conspiracy of this magnitude. That's good to hear. Speaking of which, this is Long Arm Lauren. She is the leader of the natives who you kept chasing out of the Hoblang Valley. Uh, greetings. I think we're going to have a nice long chat with Teeny Weeny Caesar. And so, the mission to Olaria 4 was a success. The war between the Guglin Empire and the natives ended peacefully. Our translator technology would not only help the two species communicate with each other, but I suspect that once news of it reaches the Guglin home planet, Teeny Weeny Caesar would become a very wealthy man. We need not conquer our friends, but rather embrace them as our colleagues and work together for a better future. <laughs>